hug you, Nate. Um, Nate, now, if you do happen to get on video, Nate getting a hug at that event, I definitely, definitely want that video. All right, Brother Samuel, I want that video. Brother Luke, I want that video of that. Oh, you guys aren't going to be there. That's right. Sorry, guys. Well, anyway, who's taking the video camera? Aaron, you're taking it, right? Yeah. What's that? Give it to Roy. Nobody will say anything to Roy. And if they do, Roy will go, what? All right. Are we ready? Brother Aaron, are we ready? All right. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18, please. Revelation chapter 18. We're going to talk about something here today, a few, a few different messages here today. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of timely with, we've been taught, we talked about suicide on, on Wednesday and we dealt with suicide, the issue of suicide. And, uh, you know, we're not done with that, by the way, we're going to talk about that again, the next hour, a little bit, but we're going to talk about pharmaceutical sorcerers and who are the real drug dealers. Okay. Cause as we see our nation right now, as we look at our nation right now, we have one drugged up nation. Okay. And they are completely drugged up. What's that? Yeah, it really does. It, it does tie into it, absolutely, because as you study this, what you realize is, is that something's going on here. And who are the real drug dealers? Because we have this war on drugs. Well, the war on drugs is not the same war. It's not the war that we should be having. There should be a war on drugs, but it should be a war on the pharmaceutical companies. Okay, that's where the war should actually be, because they are the billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industries. But is there, but let me ask you, is there a satanic side to this? It's a good question to ask. Is there a devilish side to this? Is, does the Bible have anything to say about these drugs? Does it have anything to say about this sorcery? And that's why we call them pharmaceutical sorcerers. All right? Because they are sorcerers. That's exactly what they are. They are sorcerers. But let's prove it from the scriptures. Then we're going to prove and see that this is all part of the end times apostasy. It is all part of the end times delusion. I'm telling you, these drugs are being used to, to, for people to be under strong delusion. And we have a world of zombies. Absolute zombies have no idea of reality. But there is more than one way that you create a zombie. It's not just through Hollywood, but hey, that Hollywood programming and all of that, coupled with the drugs that are being pumped into people every single day. Nonstop. When I show you the statistics of drugs that people use in America, we have lost our minds in America. We have become a nation that is completely jacked up or drowned down completely you have just a doped up nation right now i mean it's there's medicine for everything now and i mean drugs that change alter your mind and by the way i speak from experience because i know people that have, that have been through that i have family members that have taken these drugs and what these drugs have done to them and there's other testimonies that can be given i mean there's and the evidence is right there Nobody even really looks at the evidence because there's an agenda. Nobody really cares about these people. Uh, the government really doesn't care about these people dying and people being murdered and all that. They care about taking your liberties away from you and using guns as an issue. They want to use guns as an issue to say, well, see, it's because of the gun. We take a gun away and you give enough people pumped up drugs and you make them crazy enough, they'll use a stick, they'll use a tree, they'll use a car, they'll use a rock, they'll use whatever they can get their hands on to kill somebody. It ain't going to matter what it is. That's right. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we pray you'd bless us now. Help us understand this, Lord, this chemical sorcery that's going on, Lord, this pharmaceutical sorcery that's taken over. 
our nation, Lord, is consumed. Young children are being put on these drugs, altering their minds possibly forever. Lord, we pray and speak to our hearts. Help us to be a different people, even in these times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, these kind of messages aren't popular. And first of all, let me say, no, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not trying to be, okay? I, I, I'm not trying to be a doctor. And if you're on these drugs, psychotropics or anything else, don't just take yourself off of these drugs without medical assistance and without getting help from somebody who understands the issues and can help you get off of these, these medic medications. Because once you're on these and you go off of them, you are suicidal. And you're, you're because, and there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that, all right? Revelation chapter 18, verse number 23. This is talking about the end times here. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorceries. We're going to, you know, we're going to look at that word sorcery and really understand what that means. Now, I'm not trying to correct the King James Bible here. I want you to understand this, okay? Because that word pharmakia, which we're going to talk about, is one aspect of sorcery, okay? But when the King James Bible uses that whole term of sorcery, it really explains what a sorcerer is completely in its entirety, okay? So it's not, we're, not, we're not trying to correct anything or fix anything or change anything, all right? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, verse number 21, neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. What do we have today, folks? We have a nation full of sorcery. But we don't even know what sorcery means. So when you think of sorcery, you think Merlin's going to come out with a big staff somewhere, right? With a long beard like Aaron, all right? And he's going to have a big staff, and he's going to have one of those big Phrygian caps or whatever, right? He's going to have this big, and he's going to have a big staff in his hand, and he's going to be like going like this and waving magic. That's what you think a sorcerer is. But that's because you don't understand what the Bible says. That's because we are ignorant of what the Bible says a sorcerer is. We're ignorant of what a sorcerer does. We're ignorant of that. But we're going to look at it. Revelation chapter 17, verse number 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. See, what's this woman have in her hand? She's got a cup in her hand. Why does she have a cup in her hand? Because she's giving you something to drink. That's why. Verse number two says, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. You can't separate drugs from the occult. Never. I don't care. See... Here's the problem today what we have. We think if a guy has a white coat on and he's in a doctor's office, that if he gives you some pharmacia, if he gives you some medication, if he gives you something, and as long as he's giving it to you and not the street thug down the street, as long as he's giving it to you, but the same, it does the same thing, oh, it's okay because, see, a doctor's done it's legal. It's legal, right? So that means it's right because a doctor is prescribing it. No, it's not. It doesn't mean it's right just because the doctor is giving it to you. As we can prove, doctors, doctors perform abortions. The same people that's hands that shed innocent blood are giving people medications. And where are these medications coming from? And who are prescribed? Who are giving them? And why are these doctors so apt to hand you 10 different prescriptions when you go in for something? Why? Have you ever wondered why? Was it this way all the time? Has it always been this way? No, I'm going to tell you what. Because God's people have fell for the, for, for the lie of evolution. That's what they have. They've absolutely fell for the lie of evolution. Because as they see, most of this modern day medicine is based off of an evolutionary design. They look at the body, they look at the human body as, as, as evolving. They look at it that way and they, what do they do? They... they Seek out many evil inventions. But it's always been that way. It's just never been as popular in society as it is now today. Wait till you hear some of these statistics. Jeremiah 51.7 says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. You know what that word mad means? See, you, think that, you and I think that word mad just means while you're angry about something. No, 
It can mean that. I mean, in the sense of today, we use it as that. But really, that word mad means deranged, out of it, psychopathic, like a zombie. Nothing there, folks, nothing. We have a nation like that. We don't even have a nation like that, folks. We got churches like that. We have churches like that. We have churches like that that are complete, that are full of people that are zombies, pretty much. They are so doped up, they don't know what's going on. But by the way, you, cannot, you will not separate that, those sorceries from the spirit of Babylon, those pharmakia with the spirit of Babylon. Do you understand that? So what we have is, is we have a spirit of Babylon that is making the nations mad. That's what we have. We have that same end time spirit that, nation, that nations are mad. They are drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's what they are. They are absolutely delusional. We have people today that are absolutely detached from reality and completely delusional. So who are the real sorcerers today? Do we know who they are? Who are the real drug dealers? You think about that. Who are the real drug dealers? And I'm going to tell you, this situation, that this issue hits closer than you can ever imagine. Because it is, it is, it is everywhere. There's a drug for everything. And if there's not a problem... They'll make a drug and create a problem to sell it. By the way, they admit it. Go watch a video called Market of Ma Marketing Madness. Is that what it is? Marketing Madness? Marketing of Madness. Go watch that video. Yeah. Just read about these pharmaceutical companies and do some study about where these high-level pharmaceutical companies, the, the, the most wealthiest ones in the world, where they come from. It'll, it'll make you cringe. How they actually develop diseases and how they figure out whether you're bipolar or not. I'm going to tell you what, bipolar and all those other things, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> all right, listen. Or a kid, he's got ADHD or he's got this. No, he might just have too much sugar and he might need some discipline. All right? See, preacher, you don't believe in all those labels? No, I don't believe in all those labels. Not at all. Not in the least bit. I believe that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child and the rod of correction driveth it far from him. Amen. Well, that's too simple. We can't make billions of dollars on that. That's right. We also can't enslave your children with dope either. Yeah, do an internet search. You won't find a whole lot of sermons on this because people are very timid to talk about these things. That they're scared that somebody's going to get upset with them or something. Somebody's going to do something if they do it. But I'm going to read you something close to home here. By the way, let me, let me say this before I get into that. The Bible says the nations are mad, but what are they mad with? And what are they mad about? Who's doping them up? Is it the street pharmacist that sells the, the weed or the cocaine down the corner? Is that, is that who's doping them up? Is that who has the power in this nation? Oh, my friend. You see, we've been deceived on this war on drugs. I'm not for smoke and dope and, and, and cocaine, all that stuff. Listen, I, I understand that's all evil, okay? L listen to me, okay? The point is, is that, no, we have legalized the drug trade in America. We have absolutely, and, but we haven't only legalized it. We have, as Christians, accepted the world's model. We have, we have accepted the world's model. And drugs and being doped up has absolutely infiltrated the churches today. Where pastors are more concerned with prescribing some kind of medicine or, or sending their, them to a doctor to prescribe medicine. Excuse me. Oh, go see a doctor. You have a mental issue. Go see a doctor. Right? No. You got a spiritual issue. You have a spiritual issue. That's what you have. Rochester, Minnesota, researchers find that nearly 70% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug. And more than half receive at least two prescriptions, reports CBS Atlanta. Mayo Clinic, a nonprofit medical and research center, reports that antibiotics, antidepressants, and painkiller opiates are the most common prescriptions given to Americans. The study is uncovering valuable information to the researchers about U.S. prescription practices. 
Often when people talk about health conditions, they're talking about chronic conditions such as heart diseases or diabetes, Dr. Sauver stated in the Mayo Clinic press release. However, the second, listen, listen to this, listen to this. This is going to shock you, or it should at least. However, the second most common prescription was for antidepressants. Do you understand the second most common prescription given to people in America? Antidepressants. So you're talking like 40% of Americans probably under that 70% that are on that are on antidepressants. They say this, that suggests mental health is a huge issue and is something we should focus on. No, I'm going to tell you what you should focus on. It's a spiritual matter, and I'm going to prove that today. That's exactly what it is. And the third most common drugs were opiates, which is a bit concerning considering their addicting nature. Think about it. You know how absolutely addicting those, those drugs are? Once you get on them, Nearly one in four women ages 50 to 64 were found to be on an antidepressant. With 13% of the overall population also on antidepressants. 17% of people in the study were being prescribed antibiotics and 13% were on pain-killing opiates. 20% of U.S. patients were also found to be on five or more prescription medications. Antidepressants and opiates were most common among young and middle-aged adults. Kids. Young people. The percentage of people who took at least one prescription drug in the past month increased from 44% in 1999 to 2000 to 48% in 2007 and 8, the Mayo Clinic reports. Expenditures, listen, because here's where you find out what it's really about. All right, listen. Expenditures on prescription drugs reached $250 billion in 2009. You see why nobody wants to tackle that giant? Why? Because these companies are ran by devil-possessed people, that's why. And they're devil-possessed and they're, they're infused with all this stuff. And you can't separate the truth from that spirit of Babylon. You can't separate it from the drug addiction in America, from the drug use in America. I mean, folks, they don't even test your, your, if you drink water out of a tap, okay, your water, chances are your water is full of prescription drugs and medication. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? They don't test for it. So some people tested for it and found that there are prescription drugs in tap water. Why? Because we have an absolutely doped up nation, that's why. And you can do what you want to with people who are doped up. According to the CDC, oh, by the way, expenditures on prescription drugs reached $250 billion in 2009 and accounted for 12% of total personal health care expenditures. According to the CDC, the, the, the percent of persons using at least one prescription drug in the past month Increased nearly 50% between 2010 and 2000, 2007 and 2010. The researchers said prescription drug spending will only increase in the future. It will only increase in the future. The most power, listen to this, the most powerful German corporate emporium in the first half of this century was known as IG Farben. And was nothing more than a powerful cartel of BA, BASF, Bayer, and other German chemical and pharmaceutical companies. IG Farben was the single largest donor to the election campaign of Adolf Hitler. And the beginning of the modern day pharmaceutical industry, Zyklon B, an extermination gas produced by, I don't know how to say this, Hoecht, was used to kill millions of innocent people before their corpses were burnt. The U.S. government investigation of all the factors leading to the Second World War in 1946 came to the conclusion that without I.G. Farben, the Second World War would simply not have been possible. 
Economic greed by companies like Bayer was the key factor in bringing about the Holocaust. Think about it. So what, is the, what does the word sorcery mean? Well, that word, that word sorcery, pharmakia, the use or administrating of drugs, poisoning. Sorcery, magical arts, often found in connection with idolatry and fostered by it. That's what it is. It's the, it's the administration of drugs. It's the giving of drugs. It's where we get our word pharmacy from. Same word, sorcery. But it's connected with magical arts and idolatry. Well, what was the goal of magical? What was the goal when they did spells and they, and they conjured up things, they made potions to control that person, to get, to get a desired reaction from someone, right? So you gave them that, you mixed up that potion, you gave them that. Don't believe me? Come on, think about it, folks. Think it down as simple as something as alcohol, okay? Something simple as alcohol. Someone knows that if they want to seduce somebody you give them enough alcohol put them in the right position and they're probably going to be able to seduce them happens every day in america millions of times right yep so what are you doing with, what do you do with drugs then the exact same thing especially mind altering drugs the deceptions and seductions of adult idolatry that's what the word means in sorcery. In sorcery, the use of drugs, whether simple or potent, was generally accompanied by incantations and appeals to occult powers with the provision of various charms, amulets, etc., professedly designed to keep the applicant or patient from the attention and power of demons, but actually to impress the applicant with the mysterious resources and powers of the sorcerer. That's what they did with them. You cannot separate... Conjuring up spirits and witchcraft with drug abuse, with drug use. You cannot separate the two. That's how they do it. That's how you make your mind empty, right? That's how they make your mind empty. Once they do that and they make your mind empty, once that is done, then what happens? Once your mind is empty, then you're devils. You're in a position to... A gateway to devils. That's what it is. Revelation 18, 23 says this, And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Who are the great merchants of the earth today? Are they not the drug companies? Are they not the drug companies? Look at the fortunes and the amount, the billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. We just said $250 billion worth of sales in 2009 alone. That's just America, folks. It's more than that now. A lot more than that. And it's increasing. Why? Because we have a doped up nation. And all it is is sorcery. There's two spirits in the world. There's a spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And there's the spirit of God. Those two are not the same. Now, pharmakia works with one, but it sure don't work with the other. Sorcery works with one, but it sure don't work with the other. But I'll tell you, you can be spiritual and be on these drugs. You sure can. <laughs> but it isn't the Holy Spirit. Right now, we have a nation full of drunks and drug addicts, and they're hooked on pills. But I'm talking the legal kind. See, you think the heroin addicts and everybody, yeah, that's, that's awful, okay? That's awful. I, I, I know it is. But they give them the same legalized pills in methadone clinics and all kinds of places like that. It's the same, kind, it's the same stuff. It's just somebody with a white coat does it, so it's okay. Right? We don't care that the sorcerer is cloaked in a white, in a white, in a white robe. Now, if he looked different, if he was a street thug down on the street and he was trying to sell you drugs, your child drugs, if he was a street thug down on the street trying to sell your child drugs, you would be angry. But so many people take their children into a doctor and let them hook, get them hooked on ADHD medication, all these other antidepressant medications. They're doing the same thing the drug dealer is down the street. Only one's honest about it and the other one's a liar and gets paid a lot better. Trust me, I know. Pharmakia, it's the administering of drugs. 
Babylon hath that golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. And the nations are mad. They are mad as they Look at people around today. Can't you tell these people are either, either zombies that are out of it, right? Or they are completely jacked up and angry. Why? Because they're doped up. They're just absolutely doped up. Listen, folks, if you're a born-again Christian and you think the answer to any mental illness or mental problems or, or anything like that is a pill, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're in a lot of trouble. Because it's not the answer. Right. Some of these people are so drugged up they can hardly see straight or function. You know, they create terms like road rage. Right? Then they give you a pill for road rage. You got to control it. You got road rage, so we got to give you a pill for that. No, you got a bad temper. Need to get right with God. That's what you have. It's sin. It needs to be repented of. You need to come under the power of the Holy Ghost, not the power of devils through medication. That's right. By the way, you see that modern day medicine movement is ran by sorcerers. They practice that pharmacy. Sorcerers would administer drugs to elicit certain responses from people. Isn't that what modern day pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical medication does today? Isn't that what doctors do today? Well, you've got a problem with here. Doctor, I'm doing this. Okay, well, here's a pill for this. Since when does the problem in your body require a pill to fix? Think about that for a second. A problem with your mental state, a pill. So your problem is you just need a pill the whole time? That was your whole problem? Think about it. So your problem was you, oh, okay, so your whole problem was you need a pill. Oh. Does that strike you as odd that that's our, that's our mentality now? That's, what we, that's where we've come? It is evolution. That's exactly right. It's what it is. That's right. You got people that won't discipline their children, Christian people that won't discipline their children. They would rather go to a doctor and have them put on medication to try to control them because they do not want to discipline them. They do not want to raise them. So they put them on medication. What are you doing? You're doping them up. That's what you're doing. And then you throw them in front of the TV and all that stuff, after five minutes of their brain, they're receiving all of it. They're not thinking critically about it. They're just receiving it. It's all just coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in. So, preacher, are you saying that sorcerers use meds to let, to make people act a certain way or to conjure up devils or produce a desired effect? You better believe they did. And so do modern-day witch doctors today. Listen, they play with my sister's mind like you wouldn't believe, okay? Don't tell me. I've watched it. I was reading about a drug, and one of the side effects was shaking like this, and you couldn't stop shaking. So a month ago, my sister is sitting in a chair, and she can do nothing but shake like this. Well, we don't know what's wrong with her. Yes, you do. It's a side effect of the drugs you doped her up with, you bunch of devils. That's exactly what it is. You know it's the side effect. Quit lying to people. But you doctors get your money for it, don't you? You get your money for it, so you'll dope some kid up like that. You'll dope somebody up like that and give them stuff that'll kill them. Because you're a bunch of modern-day witch doctors, that's why. You better believe I'm yelling, because people are dying out there. And you got to wake up, people, and snap out of this. You've got to snap out of this, this delusion that is going on here today. This delusion that medication is the answer for your mental problems. And again, we have a nation full of zombies. They don't care. Why do you think they can be ran over and taken advantage of and, and they can do all these things? Why do you think they can do it in a nation like this? Because when you drug people up enough and give them entertainment... Listen, I smoked a lot of dope when I was a lost man, okay? And if you put me in front of a video game, if you put me in front of something and gave me some dope, I'd just be like, hey, cool. I mean, listen, I know people 
that used to get doped up and they just used to sit in a lawn chair and watch people mow the lawn. Because it's like extremely crazy to watch somebody mow a lawn when you're high. I don't know what it is. It's weird. But I'm just telling you, that's what they, that's, now why am I using that analogy? Because it fits. That's why. Because that's what you, that's what America is. You give them some dope and you put some entertainment in front of their face. It takes the fight out of them. That's right. And that's exactly what the devil wants to do is to take the fight out of you. That's exactly what he wants to do. You know, it takes to where you unplug from the system and you step back and you start to look. And then, you know what? It's no longer the ravings of some preacher somewhere, but it's, hey, this is the Bible. This is the truth. This is the word of God. We are being seduced by spirits and doctrines of devils. That's right. Making men effeminate. That's right. But today we have a nation of zombies that are so drugged up and out of it, they don't even have a clue what reality is. And many of them have opened up doorways to devils because that's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose of these drugs is to bring on that fourth dimension, to bring on that fourth kingdom, to the rising of the Antichrist. Why do you think we see so many, so many people into spirituality today, spiritualistic stuff and all that? Why do you think we are seeing that rise of that Antichrist spirit and all these cults? Why do you think they use these things? Why? Because they're conjuring up devils. They're making the ways of the Antichrist straight, making his path straight. They are bringing on another kingdom. And when you have a doped up people that are able to do this, you can get away with anything you want. You can get away with anything you want with them. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that. You, will never, you would never rise up against your, 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 uh, your enemies when you're doped up. Because right. everything's fine. You're complacent. Everything works fine. Number two or three or whatever number it is. So were drugs used by sorcerers of old? Let's look at that. I'm going to give you some examples of this. Is this a new thing that we have today? Nope. It's not new. Same thing. Different characters, though. But same thing. Sorcerers and witches and whatever you want to call them use drugs, and they use them to contact spirits. I'm just curious, what kind of demonic spiritual activity do you think is occurring when the New Age sorcerers called doctors and the satanic pharmaceutical companies are producing these drugs today? What do you think is, is the result of that? Oh, I don't know. Do you think maybe people going out and murdering people? People they don't even know? Shutting off their brain so there's nothing there? Like they had a lobotomy done and there's nothing there in their brain at all? We just got right with it. We're not going to stick a spike in your head anymore, right, Brother Aaron? What are we going to do? We're going to give you a chemical that makes a medical lobotomy out of you. And guess what? Then you're a zombie. And then I can, in, I can put things into your mind and you can do what, you'll do whatever you're told to do. And that's what we have. I'm telling you, folks, there's story after story after story of it. This is going to be so long, I got to keep moving. <sighs> right. Right. Right, because they got them so jacked up on drugs. And that you don't care about anybody else. Listen to me. They're no different than the drugs that are sold on the street when you see a heroin addict or somebody that goes, I just, I, they, 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 they go off by themselves. They don't want to have anything to do with anybody. They isolate themselves. They don't talk to anybody. They go, only people that do their drugs and everything else, they don't have anything to do with them. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that doctors do to people all the time. It's mind control. It's all it is. It's a lot of money. See, you can throw somebody in a nursing home and pump them with drugs and keep them alive for years like that. All right. I better keep going. I'll get myself in trouble. I better keep going. What's that? Yep. They're like the witch doctors. They like to control behavior. Psychotropic drugs in the Servantine text is listed here in one, it, it, Henbane. It's called Henbane. Known popular as a mad herb and a flower of death is like the rest of the the belladonna and mandrake, gems and weed, and other things. It's rich in alkaloid, alkaloids of sedative effect, such as uh, other medication that's, that's similar to that. This plant has been used since the Middle Ages as an ingredient of witches and sorcerers, potions for its hallucinogenic effects. And at a medical level, its narcotic properties permitted its use. 
from the 16th century onwards as an anesthetic in surgical in interventions. However, psychiatric uses of this plant flourished in the second half of the 19th century after the isolation of its alkaloids, especially hysocene and scopolamine. That's an interesting word. Anyway, <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how you say most of these words, but I will tell you this. What he's saying is the same herbs that witches and sorcerers use are used today in medications. They separate some things out. They do some things. They toy with it. Why? With their chemical sorcery. They toy with it, and then they give it out to the mass public. Folks, they don't test these drugs. And when they do test them on people, you'll never really know the results of them. Because half of them probably die when they get too many of these things. You should see some of the reports of how some of this stuff is tested. It's sick. It's sick. Hallucinogenic substances, witches, and ointments, and love potions they used as well. Ointments in the pharmaceutical context were preparations for external application made with fats, waxes, or resins. However, their extra pharmaceutical or non-therapeutic confections by witch doctors and sorcerers had been customary since the medieval times. The proliferation of witches throughout Europe, especially after the 12th century, impregnated popular culture with a whole series of legends, which eventually came to constitute a parallel reality, fiercely opposed and fought by the ecclesiastical and civil authorities. We don't fight it now. We just go in, We just accept it. Their trials in the courts of the Inquisition confirmed the use of potions and ointments. Oh. Generally containing hallucinogenic plants, such as mandrake, henbane, belladonna, or gems and weed, cooked in their famous cauldrons with fats and a host of other substances. The ingredients of these ointments produce hallucinations in the wakeful state. Do you know what these psychotropics and these, and these antidepressants, what they're doing to people? Do you know what they, the visions they see and the other things? We're going to talk about the voices and everything else. It ought to be common sense to a spiritually minded believer to understand where that's coming from. And here's a clue for you. It's not a figment of their imagination. In a wakeful state, a sensation of flying through the air, fantasies, visions of strange beings. Oh, wait, this sounds like people that I know that are on psychotropics and other drugs, that they say the same thing. They see things and people are talking to them. To so, preacher, you believe people are talking to them? Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> sure I do. Do you believe they're actually seeing these things? Yeah, I've been on drugs. Yeah. <laughs> they sure do see things. Man, I was walking around the middle. I don't even know where I was at when I was a lost man 15 years ago or whatever. I was walking around some field somewhere, and I walked around the corner someplace, and I saw a golden rooster sitting there. It was glowing, and it was a rooster sitting there. And it, was just, it, was, it was golden, shiny, and, and bright and everything. Quit laughing, Nate. I'm just telling the truth. That's what I saw. So you're going to tell me I didn't see that? I know I seen it. So when you have all these people, what do they do when you go in and say, Doc, my medication's not working out for me very well. I'm seeing stuff. Well, here, take this one. <laughs> sure. Give me another one. And they go home, they see something else. Servantis describes these effects in detail in exemplary novel, The, the Colloquial of Dogs, when Berganza refers to the activities of one of her bosses, an old woman known as La Centeres, whatever her name is, who confesses to her the practice of acts of witchcraft and the use of special ointments for these practices. Folks, you understand, the, this is no different than what witches used. They just have a white coat now, and they prescribe this stuff to people, and they get away with it. You let them lock you in a psych ward and see what they do to you. Right, Brother Aaron? You let them lock you up somewhere in a psych ward and see what they do to you. Mm -hmm. See what medication they give you. This, this that we witches put on ourselves is made of the juices of herbs that are all extreme cold and is not, as the common people say, made from the blood of the children we drown. I tell you, they are so cold that they deprive us of all senses when we spread them on ourselves and we lie stretched out without clothes on, on the ground. 
And then they go through all their other things. I'm not going to read that. On other occasions, after applying the ointment, it seems to us that we change our form and become roosters. I hope not. Owls or crows. And we go to places where our master awaits us. And there we take on our original form and enjoy the delights of that which I've told you. My ointments give me some good times, and the delight is much greater imagined than actually experienced. Before finishing the application of the ointment, she said that her body may stay senseless in that room, or it may disappear from it, and that I should not be afraid. Why? Well, you know witches work with Satan, right? Lucifer, you know that, right? So you know they work with the with spirits. I and mean, we just had one come on our fa on on our YouTube page the other day, and she was like, "I don't know what you guys you guys are just too afraid of the unknown. You just need to get yourself a spirit guide. And let's get some good spirits going in you." And uh, and that's what she said to us. What was she called again? Cool cat witches or whatever. Cool cat is what she was called. She said, "Listen, you just don't know how to control. You got to understand where the good ones. I know how to know where the good ones and the bad ones are." And she's actually on my sermon about. Um, what was the one about um, those false ministries that uh, deliverance ministries or whatever? Um, exorcism. She's actually on their comment. You guys are just too afraid. Yeah, she was on the Mormon and the necromancing one too. She goes, I'm a necromancer. I do it all the time. And hey, I'm fine. I have good spirits. What do they use? They use drugs. The same drugs. But see, you're not smoking it, right? So you're not smoking it. You're not snorting it. You're not, you're not in the back alley doing it. You're not shooting it up with a needle. So it's okay, right? The drugs that you get are from a nice guy in a white coat that gives you a little pretty pill. So it's not the same as those drugs, right? Yes, it is the same. And it gives the same response. And it'll bring devils the same way. We don't want to talk about that spirit world, though, do we? Come on, then we have to actually acknowledge that it's really there and we really have to be warring against something and we really have to be careful what's going on around us and we have to have our due diligence and we can't slack off and be sober. Why do you think the command eight times, eight times in the Bible, in the New Testament, eight times, be sober, is there? Why is it there eight times? What is that number eight? It's the new life. It's regeneration. What is God telling us in the end times? Be sober. That's right. Because of the devil, your adversary, a roaring as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And how is he using it? Well, one of his ways are these drugs. I'm gonna let, let me tell you something for the older generation, too. I wasn't planning on saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Some of you treat that doctor like he's God. And you need to stop doing that, okay? You need to stop looking at that doctor like he's God. Like he has all the answers for everything. You got to stop doing that. Because older folks treat those doctors like they are like gods or something. And it's, it's wrong. It's idolatry is what it is. Amen. If it comes out of his mouth, you trust it. Never mind going to research it and see what that pill actually does to you. <laughs> what are the side effects of this pill if I take it? Which is concocting an ointment to be used for flying to the coven, according with an illustration from a work by contemporary of Servantes. A warning, a short, true warning by Abraham Sauer, 1545 to 1593. He said, Preach, you really believe they can do that? You bet. You get enough power of the devil and you can do a lot of things. You better remember that. See, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We have the word of God. We don't need, we don't need all that extra stuff. But Satan doesn't have that. His word has no power. This word has power. And this is why that sword, I don't care if they're flying around. I don't care what they're doing. It won't matter. Because you take that sword out and they'll be gone. In this passage, Servantes gives a masterly description of the psychotropic effects of mixtures of hallucinogenic agents administered externally, out-of-body travel, visual hallucinations, pleasant sensations, and concludes with respect to the attribution by the common people of their relationship with magical practices, that all these things and similar ones are deception and lies. 
The preparation of brews and love potions with herbal remedies capable of changing the feelings and desires of those who take them in the context of popular tradition and literature related to witchcraft. We can remember the French Roman Tristan on the Spanish novel is also referred to in some of Servantine's works, such as a novel of Lucentis of Glass, and thus of the advice of Morsica in a Toledan quince jelly. She gave Thomas one of these so-called spells, believing that he could be unnerved by her forcing his will to love her, as though there were in the world herbs, spells, or words sufficient to force free will, and thus those women gave these love-inducing drinks or foods are called beneficious, for what they do is nothing short of poisoning the one who takes them, as experience has shown on many and varied occasions. The preacher, no, nobody does. Doctors don't do that. They don't give you stuff to control. Really? So if you come into a doctor's office and you're sad, what will they do? Oh, I, I'm just, I, just, I just feel sad all the time. Well, they're going to give you a happy pill to make you happy. Well, what are they doing? They're using witchcraft to change the chemical makeup of what you're going through right now, to change your brain, to change it, to, to infuse something into your mind, to change it, to make you act like something else. Well, wouldn't that be sorcery? It's not different, is it, because he has a white coat on and he has a degree? Hey, witches have degrees too. He's an expert. I know, folks. This kind of stuff is not comfortable to talk about because it hits us in those areas where we have to really trust the Lord. We, 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 we can't trust in man. We have, to trust in, we have to trust in the Lord. Right? And you give these kids this kind of medicine, and you say, well, they're not happy, so we've got to give them a pill to make them happy, right? So they go in there, and they give them some sorcery. They go, ooh, abracadabra, boom, and they give you something like that, right? And they give you that, and they say, take this. Oh, no, they don't do that, preacher. No, they don't do that. The guy in the lab does that. He mixes it up, puts it in a pill form, and sends it out to you. And they, you don't hear him say those words, but the same devils come in at the same time do the same thing. Right? Don't they? And, they? and they cause you to be happy. Hey, I'll tell you something. When I was, when I was, when I was hooked on weed and, and other drugs like that, I, I smoked it all the time. I wasn't happy if I didn't have any weed. But when I smoked some, I got happy. Why? it was messing with my mind it was changing my mind or chemical drugs or whatever else i took it would change my mind and by the way druggies on the street love farmies they call them farmies they love pharmaceutical drugs why because they're clean so you know a lot of these pharmacists a lot of these farm ph pharmaceutical students and people like that they get a hold of those drugs and they sell them to people right. why for twice the price because it's a clean high they call it I know. Put her head back in the sand. It's more comfortable, isn't it? Such was the way in which Thomas ate the jelly that he immediately began to suffer in hands and feet as though he had epilepsy. So they gave him that. She made that concoction for him, and it gave him epilepsy. And he was many hours before recovering when he did come around and was bewildered and said with clumsy and stammering tongue that a quince jelly he had eaten had killed him. Six months was he in bed. Thomas and mad with the strangest madness of all the madness that up to that time had been seen. That's some crazy madness. What does the Bible say about the spirit of Babylon? They are drunk. The nations are mad. Folks, this is all prophesied in the Word of God. Do you think, this is a, do you think the Lord Jesus Christ is surprised about, about the acceptance of drugs among God's people today? No, that's why you're to flee from Babylon. That's part of Babylon! Shamanism is best defined as a method to open a door and enter it a different, a different reality. A shaman is someone who enters an altered state of consciousness and goes on a journey in order to gather knowledge from a different reality populated by spirit. The spirit of plants and animals and the divine self, both within and around the individual. The methods used depend on the culture. Some cultures use drugs. Others use drumming. Wait a minute, preacher. Are you saying... Drugs and music could lead to something? No, I didn't say that. A shaman said it. Shaman said that. Right? Why? Because they've been doing it for thousands of years. So what do you have in America? When you have somebody listen, and we're going to talk about how music and suicide go hand in hand too, but, uh, but not today, but another day. But listen. 
when you have drumming up, drumming stuff up, and then you have the drugs, what happens? Devils, devils, devils. That's what you have. But you don't understand. Some people just need a pill. No, some people just need to be saved. But they are saved. You know what? God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's a gift of God. When you're a child of God, you have that. That's right. Some cultures use drumming and ecstatic dancing. And still others, still others utilize chanting, dancing, trance, meditation, wine, fasting, vision quests, and perversion, fornication, whatever you want to call it. Shamanism is a very highly respected profession wherein one serves his or her community, they say, as a spiritual leader, providing guidance through the psychic skills, healing abilities, and communications with divine spirit. Believed to be learned from a past incarnation and initiations, along with the study and practice in the current embodiment, the shaman is in the strictest definition is more often viewed, though its secondary meaning, one who is dedicated to a spiritual life, achieving a level of leadership and teaching. The profession can be found under various other titles, such as mantis, druid, medicine man, medicine man, medicine man, or woman. The Greeks called them opa. There is some very compelling evidence that shamanic use of hallucinogenic and psychotropic drugs dates back to the, well, they're going to go back into evolution, say the Neanderthals and Cro-Magnon and all that kind of stuff. Essentially, scholars believe that many prehistoric and ancient shamans used these drugs to commune with their deities. Now, here's what I think. Before the flood, sons of God, daughters of men, spirits are roaming the earth, giants all over the place, wickedness abounding. What was going on? They were dealing with devils. What, what did the Bible say about the end times? As in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We are hitting that tipping point now to where all manner of evil is accepted. And in order to get it accepted, in order to get devils to be accepted, you've got to conjure them up. You've got to have drugs. You've got to use drugs. And how better yet to have a righteous government, a Christian nation, uh, in parentheses, um, have an FDA that approves these drugs for the masses to use. You should see how they invent diseases. It's amazing how they invent them. And yes, I said invent them because they do. These mental disorders, they sit around in a room, and there's a bunch of them in this room, and they, they, invent this, they invent these. They go by a book that's called their Bible, which I'll get to, but they invent these diseases by saying, okay, well, this symptom, this system, okay, we'll call it this. And they invent it, and then they make a pill for it. They already have a pill for it because there's a witch doctor out there and a bunch of scientists out there with companies like IG Farben or whatever and other companies like that that already have something in the, in the wait, in the wait for, that, for that symptom. They say, well, give them this pill. This will work. You'd be surprised how bipolar and other diseases and other mental disorders were thought up by the psychologists, psychiatrists. Yeah, they vote on it in a room. Oh, yep, this is a new disease. This is what their problem is. Yeah, patents on Ebola. Yeah, that's interesting. A well-known example of this in the Delphic Oracle of ancient Greece. Rather than ingesting a drug or a combination of drugs, the Delphic priestesses likely inhaled gases that were hallucinogenic. Another ancient example in Soma, which through considered to be Druidic or Celtic priesthood tradition, seems to trace back to the Vedic peoples of the Indus Valley. Modern evidence is found in the use of peyote by shamans, by the Navajo, and by the Hopi First Nations. Ditto for a number of Middle and South American shamans, though the psychotropic drugs can be such things as secretions from poison dart frogs. Medieval Europe didn't see the end of hallucinogenic drug use. Many of the witch trials included evidence of flying to sabots and esbots as proof that a person was a witch. Research has indicated that a number of the hallucinogenic herbs used as teas or as lotions were what made medieval witches think they flew. Probably the most common use, used psychotropic agent was amenita, muscaria, or the fly 
agaric mushroom toadstool. The, it's a shroom? Okay. Well, that makes sense. You could have just called it a shroom, and I would have known what you're talking about. The use seems to have been worldwide, and the mushroom is commonly found. In Iran, they found the Homa. May have been the same, may have been Soma, or may have been wild rue, a harmaline containing shrub. It's also believed that ergot was another psychotropic agent. And in Greece, a number of the mysteries, the best known being the illusion mysteries, usually used in ergot based preparation in wine. Datura and morning glory seeds were also used and are common herbs worldwide. Sorcerers would give certain herbs to people to make them go insane. Belladonna was also a popular ingredient in magical potions used by some sorcerers to inflict death or madness upon their enemies and rivals. According to the Warlock's book by Peter Haining, 14 of its berries will produce death. Half that number will cause wild excitement and delirium. Do you understand the drugs that they're pumping in people today are this close to making them die, but enough drugs to make them crazy? Well, why do you think there's crazy people? I don't know. Some guy goes and he sits into a, into a historic uh, black church and he sits in the back there with a gun and he sits there for like an hour and a half and then all of a sudden he just starts shooting everybody. By the way, I, I, I just want to explain something to you so you understand. There's more to that story than meets the eye, but I'll put it this way. He's a kid and he just got a gun. I want you to think about this. He just got a gun on his 18th birthday, right, or whatever. It wasn't that long ago. He hadn't had it that long or whatever his birthday was. I don't remember, 21st or whatever it was. Anyway, he had just gotten a gun, it says. He just, oh, we just bought him a gun. Okay. So he went in a room full of people that when you shoot the first person, everybody's screaming, right? Everybody's going nuts. How are you that calm to walk around, okay? How are you that calm to walk around without being trained? Right. Drugs will do it. There has to be something to that, right? Well, I'll tell you what it is. But the point is this. You can't do that under a normal psyche and a normal mind. You can't do that. Because when people are screaming around, you can't even hardly concentrate. How do you know that? Well, when I sit in my house and my four kids are running around, I can't concentrate. Right, brother? I can't concentrate. But if I was on some drugs that made me like that, right? Right? If I was on those drugs that made me like that, what would that do to me? I could ignore everybody. My mind is blank. Devils are filling my mind. And I'm able to do what, I, what my mission was to do. What the voices told me to do. I ignored everybody else but the voices. Do you understand? According to the Warlock's book, the 14 of those berries, okay, the owners of these drug companies, they're sorcerers inflicting their magical drugs on the masses to make them insane. I believe that. Belladonna was also used by many farmers to guard their livestock against sorcery, despite its widespread reputation for being one of the spellcaster's most favored veins and the old saying that this plant was tended by the devil himself. It's said that sorcerers in the Middle Ages would scatter powdered hellebore on the ground before them as they walked in order to attain invisibility. Many sorcerers and witches also use the plant to induce astral projections. Known by the folk names Black Nightshade, Devil's Eye, Jupiter's Bean, that's some weird names, and Poison Tobacco, the henbane is the poisonous plant that was commonly used by sorcerers of old in rituals to conjure forth demons and fantastic apparitions. It was also used in the art of weatherworking as the plant was believed to hold the power to bring forth rain from the heavens from above. The, man, the mandrake, by the way, Brother Nate did a little bit of looking around. You, Remember, remember when, when Rachel wanted Leah's mandrakes? Remember that? Remember the mandrakes that she wanted? Well, if you don't understand what mandrakes do and what their purpose was to do, then that story would make a lot of sense to you. Well, what does she want? I always looked at it as like, well, why, why would you do that for some mandrakes? I, I didn't know what mandrakes were, first of all. I thought mandrake was like, I don't know, is that a fruit or something? What is that? I don't know what a mandrake is. I've never studied it. But as you look at that and you understand what they use mandrakes for, it was the power to seduce people and fertility and other things. The mandrake is purpose the most magical of all plants associated with spellcasters of old. This highly toxic plant is potent and in all forms of enchantment, from the most tender of love spells to the most evil of curses. By the way, remember that she buried her father. She sat on her father's idols, right? She took them out of the house. So she had idols, right? And we know that those that have idols, they sacrifice things to devils, right? 
Now, there was a time when she put those idols away towards the end of her life when Jacob was leaving, but or when, when, they, were, when they were leaving that place. And they, but anyway, uh, the most magic of all plants, it says, has also been used, among other purposes, divine, to divine the future, gain arcane knowledge, awaken or increase a person's clairvoyant powers, attract good luck, lead its master or mistress to the location of buried or hidden treasure, Attract money, promote fertility in barren women, and work reputedly as a powerful aphrodisiac. See, she knew that. So who are the real sorcerers and dealers today? I took this from an article. We're almost done with this one here. Man, this one went long here. But beware of the sorcerer's medicine. This is from a, an article that Dr. Scott Johnson had on his website. It's a really good teaching that he had on there on that. But anyway, he talks about some of this. He says, is it possible that there is a darker side to pharmaceutical medicine? Could it be that the pharmaceutical industry represents an ancient priesthood that practices sorcery and witchcraft on an unwitting populace? In search of these answers, I spent countless hours doing painstaking research to get to the bottom of this. What I discovered was truly amazing. The evidence is there for all who are searching for the truth. The fact that you are a subscriber to this newsletter proves that you are interested in learning more. He goes on to say, is there a connection to these slain, these slain people that are dying all over the place? The sorcerers, the pharmaceuticals of the whore of Babylon? Is there a connection? Could these passages be God's way that we read in Revelation chapter 18 and those others? Could these passages be a warning to God's people of the potential dangers of pharmaceutical medicine? The Bible warns us to be watchful because Satan comes disguised as an angel of light. Is it possible that pharmaceutical medicine has been disguised as a great benefit and blessing to mankind when in reality it may be a poisonous spell given potion? Spell-giving potion that has the potential to be harmful and in some cases even fatal. All throughout history, medicine and mind-altering drugs have been an integral part of black magic. Witchcraft and sorcery, apparently through drugs and medicine, the mind and the body can be opened up to demonic influence and even possession. There is a whole spiritual world around us that we are not able to see. Under the right spells cast by witches, magicians, and sorcerers with the use of drugs, the wall of division between these two dimensions can be broken down. Does this explain why such a large majority of elderly people on high doses of pharmaceutical medication claim to be seeing things and hearing voices? I don't know. Sounds right, though, doesn't it? People say they see people sitting out there and they're not. Are they on medication? Most people will tell you they're seeing things, they're on medication. <laughs> they're taking medication, right? As the world continues to slide quickly downhill to a more decadent and evil state, one wonders if the massive increase in both illegal drugs as well as prescribed medication has anything to do with it. It seems pretty obvious to me that they both play a part in the increased violence in our society and the loss of morality we are witnessing on a grand scale has Satan's hordes of demons been released from the pit of hell to inflict death and carnage on the world by possessing people's minds and bodies through the use of drugs? Many of the people responsible for brutal mass murders that have taken place over the last 10 years were on strong pharmaceutical drugs. They don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about the gun, right? Let's talk about the gun. No, let's talk about the drugs. When you see the media cover everything up, and they always promote one thing, you've got to know there's a bait and switch going on. It's just like this kid that did murder those people. It became the main talk of everything, but nobody talked about the House passing the bill that they passed, that TPP bill that they passed. The same day that bill was passed, and there was a little article like that big on it. The same time that shooting went down, the same time all that stuff was put in the news, Congress passed a, a, a law, basically, that gives... That, that moves forward to give the president fast-track authority for a, a, a Pacific trade agreement. That will, By the way, that is an undercover agreement to work in an ar the, the UN's arms treaty into America. Where you don't even have to have it approved by Congress. If he gets the next one through, he don't even have to have it approved through Congress. So what catastrophe is going to come up next week so it keeps your mind in a blank so we can concentrate and have you concentrate on a, on a race war and not concentrate on what they really did to you? Get, get this, folks. They don't, have to, they don't have to go to the Supreme Court. They don't have to go to the Supreme Court and rule the Second, the first, the second Amendment, null and void, or restriction of the Second Amendment. They can pass an arms treaty. Uh, they, they, can, they can agree. The president can sign the arms treaty 
for the UN, and they have in that arms treaty the right to come in and do what? And to force you to take your arms away from you and use armed force to take your arms away from you right in your home, to go door to door and confiscate things. Oh, they would never do that, I know. And Hitler wouldn't have done half the stuff he did. Because we've done all what Hitler's done. We just got one or two left. That's it. And when you have Jesuits and high-level Masonic uh, people out there pushing a race war, all it's doing is giving cover for what they're doing through Congress. Because then you don't really know about it. Nobody knows that they're passing these bills. And get this, the other bill that they want to pass, this, this specific trade agreement, we don't even know what's in it, and neither do they! They've already admitted! That stooge over there in Wisconsin, whatever that devil's name is, that Roman Catholic stooge over there that ran for president with Romney. What's that guy's name? Thank you. Thank you. Knight of Malta. Paul Ryan. What did he do? He said, well, we got to pass it, and then we can read it. I mean, we'll pass it, then we'll read it. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. They're, it's in this secret room, and they say only like a few congressmen have even walked in the room to read it. Why? Let me help you, okay? Plug away from the, from the mind control television. If you're on drugs, plug away from them and listen real closely, okay? They're all on the same side. The devils. There you go. I made it simple for you. He talks about one of these tragedies of Andrea Yates, and in this time that he wrote the article, it was, it was recent, so I want to read this to you. You're probably familiar with the recent tragedy where a mother from Houston drowned her five children in a bathtub. This is one of the most horrendous and heartbreaking stories I've ever heard in my life. The children ranged in age from six months to seven years. This demonically possessed woman systematically took these children one by one and held their heads underwater until they were dead. Reuters ran a story on this tragedy and quoted the husband who said this, I'm supportive of her because on the one hand, I know she killed our children. On the other, I know that the woman here is not the woman who killed my children. Andrea Yates is just one of many in America suffering from postpartum depression. The husband further elaborated, she had her psychotic side effects with her depression that led her to do this. She loved our kids and anybody that knew her knew that. Not surprisingly, after this terrible tragedy, it came out that Andrea Yates was on a heavy-duty Pharma, pharmacological cocktail mixture of antidepressants. Now, listen, folks, I want to reiterate something to you. I am not defending somebody killing themselves because they're killing people because they're on drugs, okay? I had some black guy get on there and think that I'm okay with people shooting black people because they're on drugs and acting on Facebook and acting like I'm okay with that. No, I'm trying to keep you from getting killed because they're trying to push a race war. And white people are the most ruthless, vicious killers in the world. And if you get a race war, you're not going to win. They're evil. They will annihilate you. That's how they work. There's a power behind them. It's not what you think it is, and it's very wicked. So while you're concentrating on a race war, no, I'm not making an excuse for a man being on drugs and saying that's an excuse. I'm telling you that that willing soul took those drugs, and he got amped up on those drugs, and he's got devils coming in. And why are we seeing these things? Wait a minute. Did somebody help me about antidepressant? Well, you have antidepressant drugs that are depressing you? And you kill people on antidepressant drugs? Wait, doesn't that defeat the purpose? 40,000 suicides, that's right. I can safely say they're not doing it right. Okay, I can say that. During a two-year period, Yates was prescribed four extremely potent mind-altering drugs intended to help her through two episodes of severe depression that began after the birth of their fourth child. During Yates's first episode, she began to take Haldol, Exifor, and Welbutrin. And their fifth child, in her second episode, she was put on another round of drugs that consisted of Exifor and Remarin. The inside of the news story went on further to, to report Yates's husband has said that his wife was given Exifor at a dosage nearly twice the recommended maximum limit. See, you didn't hear that in the news, did you? You don't hear that talked about. Why? Because it's a $300 billion industry a year. Do you think that they're going to they're, they're put that message out there?
That's why right, one trillion worldwide. And most of it's in America, by the way. It's the sad part. Just days before the murders, the murders, the Exifor was for some reason reduced to just slightly more than the recommended maximum dosage of 225 milligrams per day, and the Remeron was added. Do you know what happens when you do those lethal cocktails like that? I watch, you don't believe me? Okay, let me give you that. My sister. Hmm? One minute my sister will have a smile on her face and she'll be happy and she'll be go lucky and everything's fine. They adjust her medication and they change it. They put something in her medication that's different or they up it or they dose it. I'm just going to tell you the truth. My dad's sitting in a chair. My dad was sitting in a chair and she walked up behind him. She had like this and she had a butcher knife in her hand and she looked at my dad and she said, Dad, I have a knife. Right? Oh, that's just because she's mentally handicapped. No, that's because you got devils in her. You're doping her up. That's why. Oh, I don't like that. That's not very comfortable to talk about. Folks, that's reality. And you know what? You need to be warned. You need to be warned against it. And you know what? <laughs> if it makes everybody upset and, and people get mad at me, I don't really care because people are dying from this stuff. They are dying from it. And we have mass murders all over the place because of this stuff. And you got a girl that never really got angry too much at anybody, hardly, wanting to fight people all the time because they keep mixing these cocktails in her and they keep changing it. One day she can't even walk. She's so shaky she can't even walk. So they adjust her medication. The next day she can, or two days later, three days later, she can walk. Sometimes she has to be held down with restraints because she can't, she can't function. Why? Because they keep changing the cocktail. So let me ask you a question. When are they going to change it so much that it kills her? So what do they do when, they, when she starts acting up or something happens? Well, let's call the psychiatrist and we'll talk to him about it. So the psychiatrist goes, oh, yeah, hey, take this, take this, take this, and take this. You'll be good. Charleston shooter. Dylan Storm Roof. This is the newest one that happened, right? Dylan Storm Roof, this young man, was reportedly taking a drug that has been linked with, this is from InfoWars, by the way, has been linked with sudden outbursts of violence fitting the pattern of innumerable other mass shooters who were on or had recently come off of pharmaceutical drugs linked to aggression. According to CBS News report earlier this year, when cops searched Roof after he was acting suspiciously inside a Bath and Body Works store, they found orange strips that Roof told officers was Suboxone, a narcotic that is used to treat opiate addiction. Suboxone is a habit-forming drug that has been connected with sudden outbursts of aggression. A user on the MD Junction website relates how her husband became violent, smashing things and threatening me after just a few days of coming off Suboxone. Another poster on the drugs.com website tells the story of how his personality completely changed as a result of taking Suboxone. The individual relates that he became nasty and violent just weeks into taking the drug, adding that he would snap and be mean to people for no reason. Another poster reveals how his son-in-law completely changed on Suboxone and that the drug sent him into self-destruct mode. A user named Jahalloway also tells the story of how her husband's addiction to Suboxone was ruining our life. A poster on a separate forum writes about how he became horribly aggressive towards his partner after taking eight milligrams of Suboxone. A website devoted to horror stories about the drugs called Subsucks.com also features a post by a woman whose husband obtained a gun and began violently beating his 15-year-old son after taping, taking Suboxone. <clears throat> According to a Courier General report, Suboxone is increasingly being abused sold on the streets, inappropriately prescribed by doctors. For some users, it is even more addictive than the drugs it's supposed to help them quit. As we previously highly, uh, vir uh, highlighted, virtually every major mass shooter was taking some form of SSRI or other pharmaceutical drug at the time of their attack, including the Columbine killer, Eric Harris, the Batman shooter, James Holmes, and Sandy Hook gunman, Adam Lanza. As the website SSR Stories profusely documents, there are literally hundreds of examples of mass shootings, murders, and others, other violent episodes that have been committed by individuals on psychiatric drugs over the past three decades. 
Pharmaceutical giants who produce drugs like Zoloft, Prozac, and Paxil spend around $2.4 billion a year on direct-to-consumer television advertising every year, which is undoubtedly one of the primary reasons why the connection is habitually downplayed or ignored entirely. So I ask you, who are the real drug dealers? That's what I'm going to ask you. Who are the real drug dealers? Who are the real sorcerers today? Right. And who are the dupes that are taking them? Right. Is that dupes on dope? That's right. The Bible says Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk and the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. What do we see there? Madness. What did they describe? Madness. Folks, it's the same thing. It's no different. You're dealing with the same drugs. You're dealing with just a different administer of those drugs. One is a legal administer and one is an illegal administer of drugs. One is done in a lab. One is put together like that. The other is put together in a lab in somebody's basement or mixture or co concoction. But they're still done, and they're still destroying people. And the nations are mad because of it. And we're seeing it. What are we seeing a rise of this demonic activity, this, this wickedness, this murder, this mass murder and everything? We see it. We're seeing it live right in front of our faces. You and I, we're, we're called to be different, not the same. As the world father lord i thank you for this i pray lord that it would sink into hearts that hear the truth of it and it might change them lord it might help some people that are struggling with this and lord jesus i pray that we'd be an informed people in these end times that we would understand the sorcery that's going on around us and what sorcery is and lord you've showed us and we're going to see it again in the next message lord i just pray that your people would wake up and see this and lord that we would abstain from that we would have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness rather reprove them in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we'll take about 10 minutes.